Inside this second-hand clothing store, there are a lot of options for a fashion lover on a budget. This one is $56, which I think is a bargain because it's beautiful. Yet the store is still struggling to maintain sales. It's a bit of a scary time to be in retail right now. And what's scary? Sales are going okay, but they have definitely plateaued in the last year. It's so scary to see the fashion news at the moment because there are so many designers that are going out of business. Fashion and swimwear chain Tiger Lily just went back into voluntary administration for the second time, while vacuum cleaner store Godfrey's is shutting up for good with hundreds of workers to lose their jobs. Low-cost jewellery chain Colette is the latest casualty, with its parent company Marquis going into voluntary administration. Overall, insolvencies have been steadily rising in the retail sector. They are more than double than they were two years ago. As the retailers close their doors, Westpac's latest data shows that consumer sentiment has sunk back down towards historic lows, and many Australians are holding off buying major purchases. Like this mum of two, Rebecca Smith, whose mortgage repayments are going up. I can definitely say that my trolley these days is um, double the price but half the load. Rebecca's also shopping around more at discount stores like the Rejects shop. Its chief operating officer says their sales are up as more consumers buy everyday items like dog food and shampoo. It's really hard out there and it's hard for Australian families particularly and I think they're really looking for ways to save money every day. Despite the silver lining for the chain store, the Reject shop's net profit is still down. So are margins being squeezed and how? I think just general inflation across all cost lines as you would have seen. The National Retailers Association, which represents smaller stores and medium-sized chains, says that three in four of their members are struggling to pay overheads. 44% of businesses are doing less profit than last year. We've actually called upon the government in the May budget to bring in measures around energy, around insurance and around those operational costs, specific wages. NAB's latest business data does show that the worst might be over. There's been a bit of an improvement in forward orders in retail uh, and there has been a little pick up in confidence in retail as well in March. We do think the period of uh, slower consumer spending is going to last a little while longer. Our expectation is that consumer spending will pick up more in the second half of 2024. Kirsta Hawkins has outstanding debt from opening her third store, but she hopes to keep expanding. Right now we're investing heavily in a new website because I think that e-com is kind of the way forward. You know, we can reach a national audience that way. We just kind of have to keep hoping that we're going to do the right thing. It's all that retailers can do as they wait for shoppers to return. Amelia Turz on there. And with the Westpac Consumer Index sentiment down by more than 2% in April, extending an already historically long period of pessimism, Westpac senior economist Matthew Hassan joined me to break down why consumers remain bleak and when they expect conditions will improve. Hi, Matthew. Other slumps in consumer sentiment have lasted for nine months or less. What's at play right now? Well, I think what we're seeing is that uh, you know, the today's extended post-COVID inflation lockdown is a different dynamic than the sorts of slowdowns and slumps we've seen in the consumer in the past. You know, in the past, you generally have a sharp fall because the economy suddenly slowed and there's a fear of job loss that goes with that. Um, and there haven't been, almost always haven't been the same overarching inflation issues. And so policymakers, so the RBA and the federal government, have been able to come to support the household sector. This time around, the inflation threat is very different. Um, and that's uh, not allowing policy to provide offsetting support. The scale of the inflation is having a direct impact in terms of cost of living pressures for households. Uh, and it's a much more protracted problem. We're three years into this inflation now. Uh, policy started tightening two years ago. And there's still not really a clear end in sight to this for consumers. So still doubting whether we'll even get rate cuts this year. Um, and certainly still feeling the pinch as far as incomes and uh, cost of living pressures go. So would you say consumer sentiment really is riding on anticipation of interest rate cuts? Well, they're waiting for light at the end of the, t the tunnel. It's not 
only about interest rate cuts. I think you know, there's, a, there's a hope that the cost of living pressures ease and we'll get some hopefully some confirmation with the uh, next round of CPI updates that inflation is subsiding. That's still not going to close the gap between prices and incomes. It's still going to be a very stretched environment as far as affordability goes. I think there's other things coming in the next few months. The July tax cuts are a big thing that are starting to give a little bit of uh, sort of slightly less pessimistic uh, tone to the consumer at the moment, but it's still very pessimistic overall. I think it's a combination. It's not just the prospect of rate cuts. It's a very clear signal from the RBA and from others that this inflation challenge is under control again and that we're not going to have to continue to battle high inflation for a lot longer. You ask consumers about their intentions in relation to major purchasing decisions. Do you expect something like the tax cuts we're going to see in the middle of the year will influence how people feel about a major purchase such as a car or a house? Well, it, it should do. At the moment, those responses to those questions are really just keying straight into cost of living issues. That index is really interesting. Historically, the average is 125. So that means people are usually pretty optimistic about whether it's a good time to buy a major household item. Over the last 12 months, we've had readings around 75 to 80 for that measure, which is just off the scale in terms of weakness. And it really has coincided with this surge in price pressures, which started out in major items, so household goods in particular, uh, and has, hasn't yet really abated. Uh, so for consumers, yes, they'll perhaps feel a little bit more prepared to spend once incomes start to get a bit more support. It could be a slow road to recovery for those particular components. It may be a while yet before consumers get back to, to square as far as sentiment goes. And so when do you expect we are going to see sentiment really pick up? Could we have to wait for inflation to return to the RBA's target range? Well, hopefully not that long, because um, we're still some way off from getting actual inflation back in, in the target zone. Um, we're going to have to keep running these surveys to really know. It could play out in a couple of different ways. It could be that we get a very clear positive signal from the RBA that they're now confident that inflation gets back under control and that they may start to contemplate some easing in policy. And that signal alone could be quite an important catalyst for confidence more generally. It could be slower going, though. Um, it, if that inflation last leg on bringing inflation back down to below 3% takes a little longer, um, if there's perhaps some disappointment that uh, inflation coming back under control doesn't reconcile the cost of living issues, it doesn't close the gap between income and prices, it'll take several years to really do that. So whether we get a, a quick pop it may be that we get an initial pop and then a bit of a fade if, that's, if that cost of living issue is, is sort of holding things back into the new few years. So it'd be really interesting to see how this, how this plays out. Absolutely. Matthew Hassan, thank you. You're welcome.